Hey everyone, welcome to Jojo's World. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Salutations. And greetings from the Nevermore. Hail and well met, traveller. Gather round the campfire and we'll tell you a tale. A tale of youths and and the elderly men they hate. <laughs> and most important greeting of all. Good morning. Mario Radio. I'm Liam S. Smith, one of your co-hosts. And I'm Nick Ballantyne, the other one. Of the co-hosts. This is our JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Recap and Discussion Podcast, where we are recapping and discussing, can't forget that, uh-huh. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable. I'm with you. To tantalise you with our comedic stylings and fun little riffs. No, you lost me. You lost me there. <laughs> and I just realised that I forgot to open all the web pages that I'll be <laughs> referring to this episode before we started recording. So let me just quickly check what chapters this... Episode of the manga depicts. Nick, why don't you say something in the meantime? Hi everyone, I'm Nick Ballantyne, and I'm here to talk to you about the importance of preparation. Whether you're hunting monsters in Monster Hunter, or running a podcast with Liam S. Smith as the main host, I guess, is what he is, you always want to prepare. And I'm prepared, but I don't know what episode we're up to, because I also am very bad at preparing things in my mind. So, uh, if you could actually just bring that up real quick, I can tell you which episode this is brought to you by, but I don't know yet. I don't keep count of these things. Well, that's what I was hoping you would say while you were vamping, but evidently you can't and won't. No. So, let's just lapse into an awkward silence <laughs> until I'm ready, then. How about I hit you with a question instead? How about you hit me on the head with a coconut so I lose my memory <laughs> of this whole debacle? <laughs> What's your question, Nick? Um, so... This episode... This episode. Sheer Heart Attack Part 2, which is, of course, the 24th episode of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable, and the 98th episode of the series as a whole. It covers... Sure, let's go with this Jojo wiki. Mm -hmm. It covers a single panel on the last page of chapter 359 (laughs) through 364 of the manga. Right, so my question was going to be, um, why? Why what? Just in general. Good ep. Good ep. Good ep. This episode, which is good, is brought to you by Chris Barnes. Chris Barnes. A man, a myth, um, also a man. Frequent frequent critter torresponder, Chris Uh Barnes. (laughs) He's a lad who knows how to be in touch. How to run some animals into a fryer. Nope, it's not a crisp barn, it's just Chris Barnes. Oh, Nick, that was bad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Supposed to yes and you, but that was uh, that was rough. (laughs) That was a fucking stretch and a half, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Chris Barnes. You are much appreciated. And now, Liam, let's continue this train tre- this train trek of an episode. Let's continue this Star Trek of an episode. Captain's Log, Saturday, 1st of September. We're now, re- they, now they know. Oh, shit. We're recording this episode in a room. We've got some mild a soundproofing. Room in the address of... <laughs> no. Nick. Yes. I want to share with you... What? Some words... Of okay. wisdom. Okay, but you always do that whenever you talk. Uh, uh, see? Compliment. See? It's nice to be positive to your friends. Some words of wisdom uh-huh. from luminary, visionary, artiste, risque author. author. <laughs> yep. Of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4 Diamond is Unbreakable, Hirohiko Araki. He writes, in volume 39 of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Which one is manga. What, what is that? Which one is volume 39? Is that the one that we're just up to now? Yes. Oh, okay. That's, gotcha. why, I, that's why I do this. Oh, okay. You should know this, Sonny it's, Jim. But it's not the one past. It's the one we're currently up to. Sure. Okay, gotcha. If that's what you need. <laughs> Here's a mystery from my daily life. Yes! Oh, hit me. Hit me up. Once, when I got out of the pool soaking wet, a friend of mine said... Man, your hair looks just like Gokuraku kun. And I fell over and fell over laughing. Who the hell is Gokuraku kun? <laughs> the main character of some manga or something? <laughs> now I know Sh- Shinigami kun, Enma kun, Akuma kun, and Jigoku kun, but who the hell is Gokuraku kun? And what kind of hair does he have? Later I asked him about it, but he didn't even remember saying it. <laughs> And we'll never know. And as you can see, that's partnered with a, a, a nice, quite quite charming picture of Hirohiko Araki standing in front of a park bench wearing blue trousers and uh, what looks to be two white shirts. <laughs> Are they both collared as well? Yep. Wow. <laughs> that guy can fashion. 
Wow. Thank you, Hirohika Araki, for everything you bring into the world. <laughs> if we could get Araki on this show. Don't know if he speaks English. Don't I mean, think he does. If we brought a translator along, which would cost money, but hey, we're made of money here now. Hey, Nick, shut up for a second. <laughs> what? I've just seen the most amazing piece of trivia about this episode on the JoJo Wiki page. <laughs> is this episode just going to be more and more of... It is, hey, hang on. It is going to be slightly getting ahead of ourselves in okay. terms of the episode recap. Okay. But I think it deserves to be shared here and now at the top of the show. <laughs> okay. In the final shot of the episode where Kira escapes... Oh, wow, we really are getting ahead of ourselves. An advertisement for Austin Powers 2 can be seen on the cinema marquee. What? Because, of course, the spy who shagged me. What? What? That's... They took my mojo, baby. That's what Kira says as he escapes. I'm sorry, hey, go back a fucking second. Yes. Legitimately, you see an ad for Austin Powers 2. Apparently. Is there an image for that? It's probably just on the, uh, I would imagine, not having noticed it myself, mm. it may even be in Japanese characters, I'm not sure, uh, but I would imagine that it was, is like, you know, particularly with older cinemas, they have that, that white board with the black lettering on it. Yeah, I would imagine that it's maybe just Austin Powers. I don't know if there's, there's a Hirohika Araki style rendering of uh, <laughs> Mike Myers' signature character, Austin Powers. <laughs> As he pulls a sick JoJo's pose. Mm. Just like a lot of this happening. To be fair, I feel like the Austin Powers body language lends itself to JoJo posing. I mean, it really does. He could just lean over slightly and already be in a JoJo's mm. pose. Shagadelic. Nice. So, Nick. Groovy. Sheer Heart Attack Part 2. The second part of Sheer Heart Attack, the arc, saga. Big episode. Yes. Game changer. Ooh, I don't know about game changer. The changing. game has changed. I mean, the game is exactly the same. It's just that we now are... What, two people down, one person down, one person the down. The game has changed. Oh, okay. All right. Agreed then. I, I will agree with this. <laughs> this is one of those episodes. Do you remember when we were talking about Red Hot Chili Pepper? Yes. And I was like, I feel like there are three sort of climaxes over the course of part four. Yes. First one being fighting Red Hot Chili Pepper, getting that arrow back. Yep. Now we're moving from there's a darkness, a serial killer whose name we don't know, whose identity is a mystery. To, to hey. Yoshikage Kira is still out there somewhere, but we don't know what he what he looks like or who he is anymore. So it's exactly the same. The as game before. changed. Oh. They know his powers. Yep. They know what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. And they know that he's somewhere, just trying to go about his sinister business, <laughs> living a quiet life alone, conducting his dark deeds, eating with severed hands, and then licking huh. severed hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that took me way too long to get. Ugh. Oh. Anywho, he's out there. He's a guy. He's we don't like him. <laughs> he's a guy on the street with a cat made of man. Yep. Yeah. Yashikage Kira, living in the big city. <laughs> so we pick up roughly where we left off last time. Uh, Koichi, our best friend, mm -hmm. has of course uh, immobilised uh, Kira's secret second power, Shia Heart Attack, <gasps> with his new newsstand, Echoes Act 3, and its amazing power, Three Freeze. I... Is it just because it rhymes? Yep. So, you know, Echoes Act 1, it's like, okay, cool, you can put onomatopoeia on things. Mm. Echoes Act 2, that onomatopoeia becomes the source of a tangible effect. Mm. Echoes Act 3, just makes shit really heavy. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes perfect sense when you consider, like, sound waves are, like, heavy, right? That's, like, that's what they are. They're just, he they're, like, heavy waves. They're, like, heavy, like, if I hit you with sound, it's, like, heavy waves of sound. Right? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. What do I know about physics? I mean, not enough, Liam. But they're heavy waves, man. They'll weigh you down. Is this the song lyric or no, something? No, God, no. <laughs> You're really freaking me out, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, you know, jiving with whatever comes to my mind. Kira's heavy hand, heavy as she a heart attack is at the moment, uh, which you might recall is heavy enough to slam through the street, mm. slams into the street and... Bystanders are all staring at Kira and he's like, Oh, I hate drawing attention to myself. I'm such a wallflower. And they're like, Oh, Kira, are you alright, buddy? I can't tolerate this humiliation in front of strangers. Kira, we're we're caring about you. You okay? Are you okay? I gotta get over there and undo whatever spell has been put on the invincible Shia heart attack. Hey Kira, do you want a friend? Do you need a hug? Some punks loom over Kira. <laughs> Maybe the punkest punks we've seen since those lads who were Dio's friends in the Victorian era. <laughs> Literally, we were just like, wow, Nazi punks fuck off. <laughs> they weren't Nazi punks. No, but they, they were, were just rude punks. Yeah, they were certainly punks. One though. of them's wearing a beanie that has a badge that says free on it. 
Um, is this the guy with the chain coming from his ear, then going down to the bull ring? Could be. Oh, man. What a guy. Classic punk aesthetics. Yeah. Classic hooligan, but with dangerous connotations. So these, these are just a couple of assholes who are walking by and saw some man in some manner of distress. And they're like, hey, man, you want me to call your mommy? You know, when in 80s movies where someone's walking through like an empty parking structure and you hear that like, wah, and just like all these punks with mohawks come out. <laughs> I mean, no. What are you talking about? 80s movies. Are you and talking about like the Warriors or something? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, like Kira runs afoul of a couple of baseball furies. <laughs> oh, man. And they're like, hey, businessman, come out to play. <laughs> Isn't that... Is that the sound that he makes? Well, I didn't do it very well, but there's like like an, a sinister punk yell you would often hear like as, as they're approaching you in the distance in 80s films. Wario, I guess. Oh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> we are not getting down with the sickness today, Liam. Okay. Kira's just going to get down with the punks, though. And Kira's just like, no, leave me alone. And they're like, whoa, you're being pretty rude to us right now. We're coming over here trying to steal stuff from you, okay? And they're like grab- grabbing his tie and pulling him in and being like, oh, well, you're drinking too much in the day, so well, you're feeling poorly. Oh, we both just got fired from our jobs, so we don't have any money or bitches anymore. <laughs> you know, if there's one thing that I can definitely empathise with these punks about, is that if you haven't got any bitches... You have to beat up a dude. Yeah, well, you got to get some fat stacks. Exactly. That's what Koi- that's what uh, Shigechi taught us. And if we're going to be respectful to his memory, Liam, which we are, we've got to get some fat stacks. We've got to get some fat stacks for the bitches. I don't know if I'm comfortable with using that word. What, fat stacks? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm way too comfortable. It's it like, it's one of those words that flips yeah, around on itself. not the word itself. I was saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, Shigechi? Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, he is a horrid mess of a man, so. Especially now. No, he's very cleanly now. Yeah, but he's just screaming in the afterlife. No, he's not. His ghost exploded. (laughs) But, like, isn't the whole He got busted. He got busted? Yeah. He got ghost busted. Yeah, that's what I was saying. He became Slimer. No, he didn't. Slimer's a ghost. Shigechi's ghost exploded. Yeah, but none of the ghosts exploded in Ghost... Wait, the marshmallow guy exploded, didn't he? He wasn't really a ghost, though. He was, like, the psychic projection formed by an ancient evil god. Yeah, so not a ghost at all. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Different things. Ah, oh, that's why it was so difficult to contend with, because he wasn't just a ghost. This is our Ghostbusters <laughs> podcast, uh, affectionately known as, um... Come on, get a good name here. Get a good name. This I man has no penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only Ghostbusters line I could remember. <laughs> there is no podcast, there is only Zool. Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, Napoleon costume ghost blowjob. Uh, These are the things I remember from Ghostbusters. Uh, I just remember a giant marshmallow man and a big dog. Th- those are the two. Oh, you mean I um, Gozer the Gozerian? Yeah, something like that. No, yeah. hang on, that was someone else. I'm thinking, of course, of um, Zool, mm-hmm. the uh, gatekeeper. Yeah. And Vince Clortho, the keymaster. Vince Clortho. Vince Clortho. The hell's Vince Clortho? One of those dogs. Oh, he was one of the dogs? Yes. Oh, okay. How fun. Let's start a Ghostbusters podcast. Let's then. not. Oh, okay. Kira gets hit by another wave of weight. His hand falls to the ground, like, as he tips over. Uh, he just falls... I think I think maybe they gave him a light shove, and that was enough to just send him reeling from the weight. Oh, no. Minor imbalance. And his hand hits the ground super hard, and just, like, this huge blood splatter comes out of it. It's mm. pretty gross. That must hurt a lot. But the punks don't seem that His deterred. bones must have just, like, shattered, you know? I mean, probably, like, if you think about having to, like, break open the skin and getting that much blood out, mm. did, I mean, you, I don't even think you'd I could- you your hand. I don't think I could even do that, like, without a giant weight on it. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you could do it? And then, yeah, these punk- punks don't even blink at that, like, oh yeah, he fell over, of course his hand exploded. <laughs> Good work, dweeb. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna tie your shoes together now, because I'm that sort of punk. So he just walks, a couple of bullies. Yeah, he just walks over and ties them in a square knot, mm. which I'm surprised they even know what the name of the knot is. But apparently these guys went to knot school or something? Scouts. Ah, that's how they're such mad punks. <laughs> and at this point, Kira's, um, his suit jacket sort of flaps open and his wallet falls out. <gasps> oh. oh, no. And they're like, hey, free money. Takey, takey. And uh, Kira just goes, no. Kira's like, he pushes his non-existent glasses up his nose with his really heavy hand. And he's like, you've activated my trap money. Yes. Anyway, there's a very small explosion. A lot of restraint shown by Kira here. (laughs) 
So it explodes to the point where his... The, the money punk, explodes. The yeah. money explodes and the punk's two fingers come off. Mm. Or like the half of his index and middle fingers. A lot of subtle manipulation you can pull off with a bomb, surprisingly. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't think so, and yet here we are. I suppose when he creates one, he can determine the power of it. I think just because it's money, maybe, it's just really small. Because, like, wasn't he saying that... No, because remember, he, he basically killed Shigechi with a 10 yen coin. Uh, 100, yeah, yen, 100 yen coin. That is true, yeah. Yeah, so maybe he can just control the power of the blast. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I don't care. It's <laughs> one of my favourite things about this show. Just the, the freedom that I have to stop caring about something that I bring up. <laughs> Just a wonderful, like, hey, Liam, what do you think about this? It's like, oh, well, this is what I think. It's like, this is what I... No, I don't care anymore. Let's move on. <laughs> and then he um gets Killer Queen to, to quickly karate chop that square knot so that his shoes aren't tied together anymore. And he kind of goes, well, well, well. A lot of karate chopping by Killer Queen this episode. Well, I mean, you know, he's a Killer Queen. He's not just down for the count. He's got to be able to... to uh... Nick's doing karate chop motions with his hands. Yeah. Like, you know, and then... Hiya. Do, do this over here, and then this over there, and... Everybody's kung fu fighting. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah. Yeah. I do a whiskey drink. <laughs> Man, this is some top quality episode we're producing right here. I like it. I'm having fun. Yeah. And I hope you are too, listener. Especially you. Patreon.com slash Jojo's <laughs> World. <laughs> They're the ones we really care about. Because... Kira's like, uh, <laughs> oh... I'm having such a bad day right now. I just want to live a quiet life. And I've got to deal with these assholes. Anyway, I'm going to walk away now while they keep crying over spilt fingers. I have to go find those fuckers wherever they are. Probably back at Centipede Shoes, I'd so imagine. I'll probably go that way. Yeah. The OP happens. Nothing new, really, to no, observe this nothing, time. Yeah, nothing good. Although we did basically just say, yep, there's a rat. There's a swirl. There's the lads. There's, there's the lads. There's some arrows. Mm-hmm. Oh, e- Echoes Act 3 was in it, um, in, when they all the arrows shoot past all the lads. Mm, which is uh, a nice little touch. I mm. got a text from my dad about the run that I did this morning. We did five kilometres in 23 minutes. Jesus Christ, how? Um, that's an all right time for me. I could have done a bit better, I was a bit stiff. 23, five, Jesus Christ. That's moderately impressive. Yep. Yep. Just casually be all like, yeah, I just, uh... Just did a run. Just did the old uh, park run. Yeah. 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 yeah, you call me a modern day Usain Bolt. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I thought Usain Bolt was the modern day Usain Bolt. Oh shit, he's still alive, isn't he? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> There's a yellow sky. Josuke and Okuyasu are running. They're like, we've got to get to Centipede Shoes. Shit's going down. And Okuyasu's like, I'm not sure what's going on, but let's go. And then we cut to Centipede Shoes? Ah, uh, yep. Sheer heart attack uh, explodes in blood and cracks, presumably mm. from when Kira slammed his hand down. Gasp. And uh, Koichi's just standing there getting a tutorial from Echoes Act 3, being like, my range is three metres. Five. Five metres. The numbers are important, Liam. Yep. My range is five metres. That's how far away I can make something heavy. If you move closer, it'll get heavier. But if you get further away from that, it won't work anymore. What do you want to do? Uh... Koichi elects to do nothing. <laughs> He's like, look, how about we just sit tight, watch him as he sinks deeper into the ground. I don't know what sheer high attack's range on triggering an explosion is, but, I mean, potentially, if he had moved closer, um, he could have spared himself a lot of anguish because it would have slowed Kira down further. Yeah, but I don't think he knew. No, of so course. Kind of how like, how yeah. could he? Yeah, exactly. He doesn't even know what he looks like yet. Mm. Yet. <gasps> he saw him He saw him from a distance with his back turned. Yeah, but he doesn't know what and he... And given that he did, it's kind of surprised it took him so long to clock what was going on in the scene that's about to happen. Oh, Jesus. Because he's like, I'm going to wait for Kuchosuke. Then Kira rocks up and he's 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 look, look, looking like he's had him a rough day. He's like, you. Yeah. He's holding himself up with a street sign, panting heavily. I just had to walk here from a tea shop, you son of a bitch. I, I really liked the way... Particularly compared to my issues with the recapping of last week's episode, mm. I feel like this series of shots does a really good job of if you missed last week's episode, sort of, or even if you if it wasn't super fresh in your mind, just reminding us what's happened because we see like a wide shot of the street where we can see Jotaro down for the count, slumped against a wall. Mm. And then it, as Kira approaches, it cuts to a view through the windows of bombed out centipede shoes of Koichi and Kira. Mm. No, it's um. It's a nice little, like, subtle reminder. Yeah. Mise-en-scene. Ooh, that's an English term. I think it's probably French. Yeah. (laughs) But used in English class. Yeah. No, I like the, uh, it's kind of like, those shots are always like, here are the two opposing philosophies Mm, kind of thing. Being a kid, being a serial killer. (laughs) 
Ah, just like Batman and the Joker. Mm. And it's always that, like, he has the upper hand. Cough, cough. See? He's like... Up, he's oh, up, he's, he's elevated. He's exactly. got more status. Exactly. Someone thought about that framing and yeah. took it from the manga, probably. <laughs> I don't know if those shots were in the manga. Um, I can't be bothered checking and I don't care. <laughs> Just the freedom you have <laughs> to not care. Oh, it's so, so freeing, yeah. yeah. It's like walking around naked and not getting arrested, which obviously can't happen because we live in a Western society where, you know, we don't have public baths or anything. I'm pulling out one of those Iraqi metaphors. Where it makes perfect sense, but then you're like, but why would you pick that? As we're going to get pretty soon. I'll give it a 5 out of 10, Nick. Okay, great. Excellent. <laughs> Keep workshopping. Yeah. <laughs> just Not on air. Job. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Kira's just walking up. He's breathing heavily and he, he goes into this... It's, inter- it's interesting. I think it's an expression of how sort of self-involved he is. Because he's just walking up to Koichi being like... I hear that your high school's opening a gym soon, or a gym open- is opening near there soon. I thought about joining because I need to get more stamina. You know, I really felt that when I tried to cross the crosswalk. Yeah, that's where I almost ran out of energy, that holding up this really heavy weight. It wasn't good. I and need to get more fit. We encounter, we the listeners, oh. or you the listeners, we the viewers, the, beaut- the beauty of this, encounter just a really poorly <laughs> translated line. I feel like they f- left out like a half a sentence in here. Because... Mm. You know, you know me, I'm not one to harp on about this sort of thing, because, you know, as long as you get the general gist, who Literally cares? Literally, every but, time we do this, you are the one to harp on about it. But I feel like I like to point it out because something's fun. I'm not like, oh, this is ruining the show. Mm. But this one, it's... I'll do it. I'll be like, it's ruining the show. <laughs> I, I feel like there's a difference between what I'm generally doing and being like, ugh, translation errors. I hope someone's got fired for that blunder. You I know? mean, in this case, I feel like it's completely justified. I feel as though if they're not fired, then... Well, uh, <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. But but in this case, I we, I stopped and wrote down the exact quote because he says, <laughs> "Just I love that you're like, no, no, don't worry, I'm having a bit of fun." So I wrote down the exact well, quote. I Here's feel, the blunder. I feel like this is an exception. Yes. Okay. It is great. He's meant to be complaining about like, oh, I don't want to be around other unhygienic guys in the gym. Because let's be honest, it's a fucking cesspool of sweat. But he says, I wonder if I'll be lifting the same dumbbells who've been playing with their dicks after not bathing for a week or getting in the same pool with them. So clearly there's a noun missing there, you know? Mm. It's almost as though someone didn't do their job, Liam. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Stop making fun of me. I just, I love that, like, we both were like, oh, yeah, we know exactly what he's trying to say. But they haven't said it, right? But they haven't said it at all. <laughs> and also, I just want to circle back. I, I alluded to this uh, in our Yoshikage Kira Wants a Quiet Life episode. But this is so fucking hy- hypocritical of him after being like, oh, I'm just going to let my gross severed hand feel up this sandwich, then leave it here for someone else to buy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but he probably exploded that. No, he's like, oh, we'll just put it back under this one here and buy this one instead. Oh, that's right. Yeah. What a fucking hypocrite. Uh, I'm so self-involved. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, he is an asshole. so... Mm. So he's like, it took me three minutes to walk here from, from that cafe. Um, and he, he reveals, like, this, this level of, of, like, recon and stalking that he's done since he became aware of the existence of other stand users and mm. killed Shigechi. Mm. He's like, oh, you probably called Josuke and Okuyasu because they live just over there. Uh, and you... Probably wouldn't have called um, Yukako and Ayasuji, who were probably also nearby at Salon Cinderella, because who would call a woman for help? You wouldn't call a lady for help, would you, Koichi? Mm. I feel like if, uh, if if I was closely affiliated with Yukako Yamagishi and I was in trouble, I'd be calling her first. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if Koichi was like, I'm in a bit of trouble, I might be having a bad time, she would be like, then the other person dies. There's no question here. I'll mm. come with my hair, thank you. Yeah. Restrain his arms immediately so he can't turn anything into a bomb and then just rip him limb from limb. Yeah. And just be like, no, the only person that has to kill Koichi is me. With affection. Aww. Yeah, Healthy. But he, yeah, but he still dies. <laughs> so Koichi's slowly realising this is Kira. and uh, Every single shot is him pointing at him going, <gasps> Gads. It takes the longest time for him to go, oh, it's You're killer. the serial killer. You killed Raimi and Shigechi and everyone else over those years. You're a monster. Get him, Act 3. And Act 3 is like, all right. So Kira is all like, um, yeah, no. Nah, I really like the way Killer Queen emerges from like the wisps of black energy coming from, from his dark soul <laughs> here. And he just basically backfists Act 3 in the face and yeah. sends both of them spinning. I like how uh, Act 3 and Koichi both land um, tumbling on their backs next to each other. Koichi just lays there for a second, but Act 3 uh, 
like props himself up. Does like a cool flip up onto his feet and strikes a pose. <laughs> it's all like, all right, I'm, I'm good. Koichi's in a cool guy. <laughs> I'm the bad boy he knows he wants to be. Mm. And they're all like, what? Two stands? Hey, Kira, how come your mum lets you have two stands? Don't be a fucking trollop, all right? It's not two stands. It's a second power of my other stand. All right, it's one stand, all right? Ah, ah, ah. If we're going to be talking about stand powers, let's talk about fucking Jotaro over there. Yeah, he like he can shoot his fingies, he can inhale things, he can he's punch really, really good and fast, he can stop time. He can see real good with his special eyes. There's so many powers and yet I'm not allowed to have two. Yeah. Come on, lads. Anyway, time to kill you both. Uh, and it's not a prisoner's dilemma, but it's some sort of uh, Sophie's choice that Koichi gets himself into. Yeah, here. a real catch-23 in that. It's not a catch- well, it is a catch-22, I guess. This is nothing. It's- <laughs> It's a it, catch because it's, yeah. it's bad either way. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can stop, like, use three freeze to slow down the bomb stand or the serial killer. But if I do, the other one will get me. So what do I do? I don't fucking know. You have to decide for yourself, man. Yeah. He back and forths with um, Echo Zack 3 again. We get Echo Zack 3 spelling out S-H-I-T again. Always a good moment. I got to pick one. Okay. I got to pick at least one. Uh, okay. I'll pick the bomb. After some mild deliberation and screaming. <laughs> and I use this as a, as a turn of phrase to imply someone getting beat down a lot. But in this case, Killer Queen literally does step on Shigechi's <laughs> neck. <laughs> so Kira's like, oh man, no matter which one you choose, it looks like you were fated to lose either way. Mm. That is a shame for you, isn't it? Choice of evils, two by two, retreat. Animated Return of the King movie. I'm shrugging. I'm shrugging right It's now. really bad. You should watch it. Is that the one where all of the, yeah, the orcs, orcs sing, are like little goblins? Yeah, and they sing, where there's a whip, um, Whoosh, there's right. a way. <laughs> Man, the connotations are bad. Good song. Good is, movie. Is is it a good song? Yeah, it's actually kind of a banger. <laughs> <laughs> Could you make a sick trap remix of it? I don't know what that is. Like, you could just make like sweet dubstep out of it. Probably. I'm sure someone has. <laughs> I'd rather be singing a couple of good old-fashioned Hobbit songs, myself, master. All right, then, laddie, go on, then. <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> That's my recommendation for the week. Everyone check out, uh, I think it's Rankin Bass. This is animated Return of the King movie. Legolas and Gimli don't exist in it. Are you serious? And Aragorn's only in it after, like, 45 minutes. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. So, 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 Kira's all like, lol, well, dumb Koichi. This was over, this was over before it started. Oh, and he, he, he's doing another one of his uh, Shakespearean soliloquies. Oh, alas, I thought Shia Heart Attack had no weaknesses. Yet now I learn Shia Heart Attack has a weakness. If you smash it with gravity, then you're in trouble. It might actually get a little stuck. Oh. Alas, alack. A, a vast. A vast, me hearties. <laughs> I had to pay him some expenses at that there cafe with some of my hard-earned businessmen doubloons. And then I got myself into a scuffle with some no-good hooligans. And then I had to move to Bel Air. <laughs> Never felt so cornered, have I, says I. <laughs> I even felt the slightest sense of defeat before I dragged me me keel over here. And, Yar. And, uh, and just fucking wrecked your day. <laughs> Do you reckon a pirate would just say... And yet, oh. I, I feel some respect for you, young master. <gasps> like a samurai. You have caused me such trouble. He's like a samurai. He's like a samurai. I suppose so. Because samurai have respect and shit. And there's like a real ominous purple close-up on Kira's face as he's talking like a regular person. <laughs> Well, not a regular person, but not yeah. like a pirate. I would not say regular at all. And I, I like this bit. He's like, I've got to show you some respect, young man. Do you have any pocket tissues or a handkerchief? Uh, no, of course not, because I'm not a psychopath. <laughs> Koichi doesn't respond because he's like, what? No, doesn't he just go, no? No, because he's just had his neck stepped on, so he's not really in a talking mood. Oh, right. Gotcha. <laughs> Come on, you can talk to me. I showed you some respect. It's only polite to, to do the same to me. No? Okay, well, take my pocket tissues. And, and then, then then Kira, not Killer Queen, Kira just fucking punches him right in the nose. And he's all like, you might need them because I think you might be bleeding Come on, a bit yeah, from wipe it off. Come on, be cleanly. I've, I'm giving you respect. This is that, such like a you know. cold, creepy sequence yeah. where he's just he's just toying with him <laughs> he's torturing him really yeah uh, and and being and then being like oh no you've got to be an upstanding young guy as i grind you into the dirt for inconveniencing me come on look good go on you'll be on your death row soon come i'm on. gonna kill you but uh i'm gonna hurt you a lot first because you upset me and i demand satisfaction 
Yeah, I can empathise with that. So, yep, he steps on his fingers, and then as Koichi goes to scream out in pain, he shoves his foot in his mouth. And he's like, don't scream all oh. weird and stuff. Open foot, insert mouth, right? Oof. I didn't scream when I was in pain before, so you shouldn't scream now. Anyway, now I'm going to grab you by the back of the head and slam your face into the ground repeatedly. So he does. So you do need those tissues now. <laughs> it's like one of those things. Have you ever heard of um, Daniel from Second Life? <laughs> no. Okay, so he is, <laughs> he's like the ultimate troll, right? He is like the ultimate troll. I cannot even begin to explain how good he is. But there's this one video of him where he's playing DayZ. Sure. And he's all like, the, he's with a guy on a roof. And he's like, hey man, do you want to jump off the roof? He's like, no. Are you sure you don't want to jump off the roof? He's like, no. And then like, he gets a bit aggressive and like punches him. And then he pulls out his gun and Daniel shoots him in the legs so that he has to crawl on the ground. And then he takes his gun from him and he's like, man, I, uh, I really bet you could jump off the roof right now. He's like, <laughs> fuck you, Daniel. Nice playing with you. Nice playing with you, bro. And then just leaves. I don't understand. <laughs> it's Because you can't jump if you have no legs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Same. The trolling is impeccable. It's like that, where it's like, boy, I really wish you uh, had tissues right now to uh, clean your nose. Well, let me just beat you into the ground. Here's some tissues. Yeah. It's just that level of like, oh, yeah. Kira is momentarily distracted as he realizes that he was gripping the back of Koichi's head so far hard that he's ripped out some of his hair and it's tangled in his fingers. He's like, oh, get out of there. Ugh. If only he had some sort of nice geometrically aligned hairstyle, like a flat top, then I maybe I wouldn't be in this mess. Nah, <laughs> nah, I don't think that'd work. And with this moment of distraction, Koichi reveals that while all this beatdown has been going on, he lifted um, Kira's wallet and took out his driver's license. And he's all like, your name is Yoshikage Kira. And there's like a stress box out of Kira's eyes that goes over the screen and he's like, <gasps> my identity. Yeah, that's right. I took your driver's license out of your wallet. Yeah, you gave me the idea when you talked about paying your expenses at the cafe. <laughs> this was your first mistake. Paying for things. You've got to give co credit to Koichi for being tough here, right? Mm. And he's like, um, so yeah, you're going to kill me, whatever. But like, I figured out your secret. And if I can do it, then you know, everyone else is. You're fucked, mate. No offense, but like, Jotaro over there killed a vampire. Yeah. Like a hundred year old vampire. He did that. I'm just a kid from high school. Yeah, I'm I'm just the least of our fellows. <laughs> My stand power was literally to make onomatopoeia a thing. Yeah. And I figured you out. You dumbass. Yeah. So, how does that feel? And Kira's like, not great. Yeah, so I write in my notes here, smug dying Koichi. <laughs> so Kira, in as I think we would all react in this situation. Um, oh, and yeah, and Koichi calls him an idiot and says he'll see him in hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, at this point, Kira's like, nah, fuck yeah, and this. And we see like his eyes twitching with rage. And then he just... Uh, Cacuines him. That's, yeah, that's how I described it too. <laughs> just uh, shoves his fist right through... Koichi's chest. And he's all like, that little smug bastard. <laughs> and we see the light slowly leave Koichi's eyes. Oh, and no. uh, we cut to credits. I mean, no, we don't cut to credits. <laughs> da, we cut to commercial. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, I miss that song. So do I. I, I miss those transitions to credits <laughs> where the, the guitar would come in, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Good. Good meme. Good meme. So, um, we got some weird Crunchyroll ads. We got uh, some for Hinamatsuri, is that what it's And called? also we got that one with the CGI bear for oh that other show. God. Golden Camry? Golden... Yep, Golden Camry. <laughs> if you ever wanted a car that could really talk to you, a Golden a Camry. A talking motorcycle. <laughs> it was also Dragon Ball Super, again. Kira's all like, oh, this guy's really ticking me off. I still have a minute until they're here. Man, have you noticed that his like sock is inside out? He's wearing his sock yeah, so inside he's, out. He's, he's, he's standing there. Killer Queen still has his fist through Koichi's chest. And Koichi's just hanging there limply. One of his shoes has fallen off. And uh, I'm like, oh, one of his socks is inside out. Doesn't that bug him? It's sure <sighs> bugging me. And Killer Queen sort of re withdraws his hand. And you're like, that's like a samurai sword sound. Yeah. That made. And swing. It was like, swing. I was like, oh, it's like a samurai. He's like a samurai, Liam. Cut to the lads running. Okiyasu's going one way and Josuke's like, no, we can cut through this way. It'll get us there quicker. And Okiyasu's all like, all right, whatever. Yep. <laughs> and then Kira's like, oh, this is bugging me. I have to, I have to switch this guy's socks over. Kira, under quite a bit of time pressure at the moment. Yeah, I just love this. I just, he's so weirdly idiosyncratic, you know? He's like, 
Man, this, doesn't he know that if he's going to die, he has to look good while Show dying? Show some respect, young man. Just, like, weird, weird, like, conservative guy being like, oh, you've got to have proper decorum in this life and death battle. Yeah, so he takes off his sock, puts the sock back on the right way on, and then puts his shoe back on and goes, there. That's better. Now I'll murder you so that it doesn't leave a single trace. And now he dies. <laughs> And, like, this is such a cool effect. Killer Queen, like, sort of rears up, strikes a cool pose, hip cock, sticking its finger into the air, which is glowing with all sorts of evil bomb energy. There's a lot of purple and yellow swirling around. There's bubbles around the place for some reason. Slowly bringing that down in, in like, another cool karate chop motion with the finger outstretched. He's like, the tip of his finger can turn anything into a bomb. I think I'll do it to your student badge. (laughs) Oh, that's cunning. No one would ever think... That he was murdered if his student badge exploded. A silhouette looms over Kira, and we hear the trademark dulcet tones of Jotaro Kujo being like, Koichi, you won the mental battle. <laughs> so Kira stops and goes, hey, hang on a fucking minute. He has to hurriedly swing around and block some punches from Star Platinum. And Jotaro is standing there and he's, he's fucked. <laughs> he's like... He's got holes in him that literally go through his body. Well, yeah, Kira, Kira's smack talking him, being like, I feel like I can almost see through you from all those wounds. Who, 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 who? You look like a cheese grater. <laughs> or maybe I should say some Swiss cheese. <laughs> I'm surprised that you could stand. <laughs> and I really need to just pull up exact quotes here because Jotaro treats us to some of the choicest smack talk in the entirety of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Just one moment. This episode is brought to you by Choice Quotes. When smack talk just isn't good enough, you want something of your choice. Choice Quotes. $33 a quote. Send money to patreon.com slash Okay, so this is from the um, oh, the Invincible Trio Part 4 translation of the manga, oh, I believe. It's so dumb. Um, Please hit me up. So the first variant is... Um, so yeah, it'll vary a bit from what Crunchyroll was saying, but mm. it doesn't matter. Nice watch. Too bad you won't be able to tell the time on it after I break it. Break your face, that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It's the dumbest fucking segue. Because mm. I was... I was like... Oh, man. Like, he's a marine biologist, but he's really bad at basic human anatomy. I don't think that's what's going on well, here. He was like, it's, I think he's, what he's really bad at is smack talk. <laughs> but he's just like, I'm going to break your watch by breaking your face. That's, no, it's that's like, not, it's not the what implication. What are you talking about? It's like a bait and switch in what he's going to break, you know? Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm going to break your watch by breaking your face, that no. is. No. Yes, Nick, that's what he's that, saying. That's in- Oh my god. Read it again. Nice watch. Too bad you won't be able to tell the time on it after I break it. Break your face, that is. Break it, the watch. The watch is the subject being referenced. Oh, Nick. Are you really... I'm just saying. Are you I'm re- just saying. Are you really doing this? Sometimes grammar is the most important <laughs> weapon of all. Oh, you've just sucked all the joy out of this line <laughs> read for me. Go on, Liam. Find another variant. No. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, <laughs> it's the dumbest line. I we, love it. We can at least agree on that. Yes, it's amazing. Kira's like, you're an interesting fellow. I'd like to stay to t- take some time to get to know you, but I'm on a tight schedule and you're going to die now. At which point Jotaro Jotaro's like, spits out blood, falls to his knees. He's like, hmm, I mean, I don't really want to die. The arrogance of Kira here. He's like, oh, your stand was so weak. My stand is so strong, even though I've never tested it against anyone but a couple of punk kids. I must have the strongest stand. Anyway, going to kill you now. Killer Queen, like, looms in for a punch on Jotaro, and it just doesn't go well. Jotaro immediately punches him off? Yeah, just whop, right to the face. And Kira's, Kira's like, like he's reeling, like, so fast, so strong. How did he do that? It's like he stopped time. And then, well, that's the thing, like, he unleashes one of those punch flurries on him. The aura aura, yeah, if you will. We get Jotaro's classic beatdown theme song. Um, Don't. (laughs) No, it's the same song. Not one of the OP songs. It's basically just a hype song. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to ham ham on him. (laughs) Sabotage by the Beastie Boys. Sure. And yeah, and Kira's like, he's moving so fast. It's like he's stopping time. Now, unbeknownst to Kira, of course, Jotaro has the power to stop time. But we can clearly see he's not doing that here. He's just using his intense speed and precision to just ruin his life. He's just being the guy with the stand that at any plot point can beat the op- like the opponent at any yeah. point. So pow, 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 pow. He goes flying. He lands in some bins with the rest of the trash. And oh, how long have you been sitting on that for, Liam? Came to me as I was saying it. Oh, damn. And he says, pick, he picks him up by the wrist. Oh, here we go. Kira is like, 
gasping for air and desperately looking up for him. And Jotaro says, Yari, Yari, mate. <laughs> now that I see it up close, your watch looks like crap. But you don't have to worry about that. After all, I'm about to make it look even worse. Your face, that is. <laughs> It's like ten. It's like fifth grader taunting. Yeah, your face, mate. It's like I could say anything with an it, and then mm. turn it into your face. That is, and you'd still be pleased. Yeah, it's just so good. So anyway, he does his smack talk. <laughs> we we're all super impressed by his wit. Yeah, every all the parents are out going very very Got good. Clap. Georgia. Very yeah. good. The parents. Yeah, the parents. Like Tomiko. Yeah. The police. Like Joseph. Kira passes out. Uh, and. Uh, Jotaro's all like, uh, Koichi, I would have died if it weren't for you. I really respect you. You've, you've become so mature over the last 15 minutes or so. Anyway, time for me to pass out and fall face first onto the road. <laughs> so he does. Yep. And we just get uh, this wide shot of the whole scene and just everyone's, everyone's in a real bad way. Mm. So then Josuke and Okiyasu show up. Yeah, just right on time to miss all the action. And they're like, holy fucking what the balls what happened, happened here? What happened here? I... <laughs> I say, what the devil is going on? Well, this is really cool because we see it from Kira's perspective and he's just barely coming back into consciousness. So his eyes are closed. It's just a black screen with, for us at least, the subtitles being like... Uh, okay, I'll try and patch him up. Is he still alive? or Is he breathing? I'll check him. You check him. I mean, he seems to be still alive, but he's not breathing. Hurry, hurry. So we, then And Kira. Kira, Kira's coming into consciousness hearing about healing powers. And he's like, hmm, okay. Well, uh, I'm fucked then if they're here. Because they're the protagonists of this series. I've never had such a bad day. <laughs> I've had to walk around people, get humiliated, have my hand exploded. Mm. He slowly starts crawling away and we see it sort of from his perspective as he's pulling himself along the ground and suddenly... Shadows loom. One, for the second time this day, two rough and rowdy boys are looming above him. <gasps> it's parallels! Mm. So Josuke and Okiyasu were like, hey, wait, no, you don't go anywhere till we figure out what's going on. Like, slowly turn around. Don't make any sudden moves. And uh, Kira's like, shit, shit, shit. Oh, think fast. Think I've got to think back to my high school acting classes. And he turns around. In which I was always cast as an extra because I don't want to stand out. <laughs> but I totally could have gotten the best part if I wanted to, you guys. So he turns around from the ground and goes, Oh, 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 oh my lord, I, I, I'm in such peril. Oh, centipede shoes, explosion. Oh, who could have thought? The owner, he ran out and then he ran away. And these two guys got blown blown out too. I, I, it was a horrid scene, oh. a horrid scene. I say, could you help me with, with some kind of medical attention? Well, well, those guys are all like, hey, calm down. Okay, um, we're going to try to patch you up. Kira sees Jotaro beginning to stir over there and he's like, oh, I need to move this along. <laughs> Quick, please hurry and fix me. Fix you? Fix you? What the fuck kind of word is fix you? To anyone else, I'm just an average high school yeah. student. I can't even get into a pachinko parlor. P people look at me and see some sort of rough and rowdy bad boy. And you, the day of my daughter's wedding, come to me? Do I look like some sort of doctor to you? What's wrong with you, huh? Punk? You son of a bitch, you must be the enemy. This was a draw. But not anymore. And Kira's like, fuck. So Kira immediately is like, okay, I need to think really fast. Well, what just, is the best can't... course of action? Pulls I can himself do? to his feet and is like, well, I guess I've lost. You've seen right. my face, you've seen my stand, you've discovered my name. Stall for time, stall for time. <laughs> I guess it's plan B o'clock. But what is plan well, says, B? You I, might I really ask. like this line. He says, uh, there's gonna be no peaceful sleep for me. But only for tonight. Killer Queen comes out, karate chops off his hand. Shink! Samurai sword sound. Dun dun dun. His hand falls to the floor. Everyone's like, what? The fuck are you doing, you pleb? Kira, tears and like mucus and blood screaming down his face. I just wanted to live a normal life. Not <sighs> so much. But I don't care about winning or losing, you see, because uh, I'm a loser. <laughs> I mean, that's not what he says at all. <laughs> it's you're the gist really, of it. You're really projecting some feelings out here. <laughs> I, alas, I am cursed to live with the fate of being unable to resist the urge to kill. But that doesn't mean I can't live a happy life. Get him, she a heart attack. I set you free. Go on. I don't want you anymore. And he punches she a heart attack and turns away to hide his, his sad tears. So... I think at this point he starts running away. Yep. So he starts running away. Exit stage left. And Jotaro is like, yo, careful. Don't get close to any of that shit because it could be a bomb. Tough stand. Um, could be a bomb. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it could be. <laughs> Almost certainly a bomb. <laughs> Um, it's unbreakable, and Josuke's like, well, I'm going to punch it anyway, and they're all, Josuke, that won't break if you do that, and Josuke's all, break? Don't be a fucking pleb. I'm Josuke, I'm fixing it, and everyone's like, ah, ha, 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 get after it. <laughs> just like, some guy on a piano just like rolls into mm. stage as a guy comes out, it's like, well, thanks everyone for joining us. <laughs> You've been a great audience. As always, everything we say is completely improvised. <laughs> Refreshments out the front. We'll come and see you out there. And remember, don't, don't touch, touch me. A- <laughs> <laughs> don't touch a severed hand. <laughs> um, he fixes Shia Heart Attack and by extension fixes the severed hand. Oh, Shia yeah. Heart Attack returns to the severed hand, which lifts up into the air and starts flying away. Fast, but not so fast that they can't pursue it. Hmm. They're like, we're going to chase him down via his severed hand and then just kick the crap out of him when we find him. So Jodo and Koichi get up and they're all like, we're also coming. And they follow along. Kira, stumbling along, meets some of his friendly co-workers who are like, hi Kira, you look like you're having a bad day. And Kira looks up and goes, why yes, I am having a bad day. I have a severed hand. And they're all like, like, oh my (gasps) fucking God, what is wrong with you? Gasp. Uh, Kira, can you, like, not yep. have a severed hand? Cut back to everyone else. Koichi's giving everyone the cliff notes on Kira. Okay, so his, his, his everything turns into a bomb. It's just everything yeah. is a bomb. 33 years old. He's, uh, he, he's... I know that because I read his driver's license. Wasn't that's it, like... I also know his address. Wasn't it, like... Oh, that's right. His address is, like, 1120 yeah. place. I don't know. Yeah. 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 One, two, three, fake street. <laughs> Where's he going, though? Like, he doesn't care. Doesn't matter. We'll get him. Wait a minute. This building. And we and we see the hand like pushing on the door of this particular building. A building with a particularly familiar entryway. <gasps> Jotaro's home! Oh god, Tomoko! Oh Just no, it's, home. Not, My it's, bad. Not, it's not that. Jotaro doesn't have a home here. He lives in the Morio Grand Hotel. Oh yeah, he does. With Joseph. I suppose so. And an invisible baby. Yep. Which every oh, episode what, we've what seen. What a it. lark. <laughs> Every episode we've seen it so far. Well, it's in that pram in the OP, as we learned. It's very, very visible. <laughs> Salon Cinderella. <gasps> Salon and, Cinderella. And we arrive at the reason that the, the that reordering of chapters and episodes that we've been encountering the last few weeks is so perfect. It's so much better. Because, to be explicit, so no one's getting confused, mm-hmm. in the manga release order, it went, um, in, ca- in meets Shigechi. Mm-hmm. Shigechi dies. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, serial killer. Yukako... Wants to be Cinderella. Mm-hmm. She had attack in which we return to Cinderella and the things that are about to happen happen. Yep. So that's immediately setting things up, then paying them off in a way that is fine, but feels a bit artificial in a sense. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, you just suddenly just decide like, to do that. Oh, you're just setting things up so you can immediately turn it into something. Whereas here, it makes it sort of feel more part of the, the fabric of the... Of Mario. Yeah, even just giving it that one extra week in our... In our yeah. The payoff is later, thing. and thus you feel more rewarded. Yeah. Because it really paid off in the end. I don't have a joke here. This is just... <laughs> this is just <laughs> this good is, writing. This is just an observation. Yeah. This is just a thing we like. We're not always filled with jokes here. Mm. And not, oh, but neither not, is Josuke. That's not to say that I dislike the other order that the manga jo- came in. It's just, I, I, I quite, I'm quite fond of this. I made a great joke, Liam. I said jokesuke. Is it j- joke, jokesuke. He's, he's, I don't understand. Because Josuke is his real name, but we were talking about jokes. So I said jokesuke. Nick, this is a no laughing matter. <laughs> Shit. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is still on Cinderella. And from this point on, basically the rest of the episode is like in an almost sort of grey scale where the colours are all muted and we've got that grainy filter over things. And everything's like, oh, fuck. Oh, bad things are happening now. <laughs> it's, it's like the colour palette of Chase, you know? Yes, it is. Mm. It's very much like that. It all comes back together. <sighs> it all comes back to Chase. And they come in and they're still seeing this hand lost a lot of the energy that was animating it before, apparently. Just mm. limping along the ground. Ba-dumpf, ba-dumpf. They see um, Kira's discarded clothes. Hey, his purple suit. And his tie. His dashing tie. His and fine shirt. His driver's license, symbolising discarded identity. Ooh. Oh. Is that symbolising or just literally he's discarded his It's life? symbolism. I mean, he's discarded his driver's license. He's discarded license, which is... the identification. <gasps> While at the same time, discarding the life of Yashikage Kira. Oh no. Whoa. Oh my god. English Lit 101. Dude. I didn't do Lit. No, well, neither did I, but we did English Literature at uni. Did we? Yeah. I didn't. You did those film units. Yeah, I did film. That's under the Lit. Is it? Umbrella. 
Oh. No one cares. Oh, okay. No one cares, Nick. This is very No one cares thrilling. about our university studies. Let me tell you about my unit. No. Let me tell you about the time we had to watch a little film called The Idiots. The Idiot. Oh, was that... Um, the... Lars von Trier, I yes. think. I did not enjoy that movie. With uh, the improvised orgy scene? Yeah. Which was like, what? Okay. Bad what? movie. Bad movie by a bad person. Ooh, Liam. I don't think that's a controversial opinion. I mean, probably not, to be fair. Apologies if there's a bit of background noise. It sounds like someone's mowing a lawn or something nearby. Picked up about halfway through the episode. Man, if only we could, like, murder him and take his hand so that he wouldn't be able to mow the lawn anymore. Am I empathising with Kira too much? Yes. Oh. (laughs) But it'd be so convenient. And then they get through that second door into the main Salon Cinderella. (gasps) Salon. And it's a pretty rough sight in there. Mm. So there's... Dr. Ayasuji. She is kind of looking a bit dead. She's splayed out on the floor. Um, with a hole in her neck. Yep, which we can tell because there's like a black dot over it. <laughs> oh man, we forgot to say that um, when Koichi got kakuhined and Jodoro got back up, we got a shot of Koichi and we knew that he was completely fucked up because there was a giant black spot <laughs> Oh, I missed that. I must have been taking notes. <laughs> it was literally like, he's there on the ground. It's like, oh, he has a hole in him. We know this because there's a giant black spot on him and that's it. No blood. No, nothing. Just a black spot. A lot of Jotaro's wounds were um, not, not censored, though. Yeah. To be fair, you couldn't see through it, which is <laughs> the real disappointing part of this episode. I feel like he was speaking metaphorically when he said that. Yeah, but still. It'd be fun. Not metaphorically, but he was not being literal. Anyway. Um, Hyperbolic. What else do we got? Uh, um, there's just like a whole bunch of like messed up furniture and yep. stuff. Yoshikage Kira is dead on the thing. Or is he? A <gasps> man. A man? A man with no shirt on. And a and still a, and attached, he's pretty buff. And a still attached left hand. Yes, because they think it's Kira. Like, why is Kira dead in here? What happened? Did he fight Aya and it turns out she's super cool and they took each other out? No, 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 no not quite that. Jodoro notices as the hand sidles past this body that this man still has his left hand. Left hand. A great character in Vampire Hunter D. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he eat, he eats things. Same. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and as it sidles up along him, he's like, hmm, it's not Yashikage Kira. And they, they, yeah, so they pull this body over and they're like, oh God, this guy's got no face. So the face, I almost laughed at this because it's like, it's beautifully cut out, but it makes him look like All he's features. <laughs> yeah, like he's got no lips over his teeth. So it's like, ah. Yeah, he's like one of those guys that's like, yeah. No nose, no eyes. Yeah, he's just a, a I think comparatively, man. when Yukako lost her face, she got off quite easily. Mmm, mmm. Well, when did she... Lo- Wait, what did she look like when she lost her face? Just like she had like just a little slot taken out of her eyes. That's right, yeah. No, she still looked like a human. Uh, whereas and this still guy looked, looked exactly like Yukako. <laughs> yeah. Whereas this time, this guy just kind of looks like um, I mean, dead. he's also dead, too. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh, no face, no fingerprints. What? Who is this guy? Where'd he come from? Was Aya up to something nefarious? No. No. Because no, it, it turns out, out she's not dead. <gasps> Aya's like, uh, 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 I'm alive. She's like, oh, oh, no. So y- you think that I'm speaking, uh, speaking in a weak sense because I'm dying. But no, this is just how I talk. So it's me, Dr. Aya Suji. Few. Oh, that's right. It's few, yeah, isn't it? I had to correct you on that because it's so good. <laughs> Fucking few. And she's like, he's wearing the same suit. <sighs> he brought that guy in and killed him. He's terrifying. I thought in that extra scene added when we all gathered at the Osens that he wouldn't come to my store. But I was wrong. He did. Few. <laughs> he made me switch his face and his hair and his fingerprints. Oh, he's someone else now. Uh, his face. Uh. <laughs> and Joe's so- like... Crazy diamond, just fix it. And then Jodoro's like, no, no. no. And we hear a click and we see Okiyasu, we see the hand doing his vroomp thing. Mm -hmm. And then abruptly Koichi and Josuke are thrown against the wall Okiyasu is against as they are pulled away from the exploding body of Dr. Ayasuji. Ah. Leaving not a trace of of him, of her, nor the man slumped over the uh, the counter. (gasps) No more Yoshikage Kira. No more body of not Yoshikage Kira. Gasp. What could be happening? Yeah, so they're like, oh, he must be out that door. We've seen, just seen the hand edge out that way. And they push on out there. Huh? Huh? Just, just the hand edge. That just brought me trivial juvenile joy. I don't get it. I mean, don't Google the hand edge, but, you know. Okay. I cool. won't. Okay. <laughs> don't at me, anyone. This sounds creepy. <laughs> Oh, God, everyone's getting out from work. We don't know what this guy looks like, and he could be anything. In this or crowd, anyone. In this bench, 
in this building? I mean, we know roughly how tall he is still, but... That's it. And he's missing a left hand. Well, uh, no. Because Josuke fixed that hand and the Kira must have, like, been out like, okay, I just need to get my hands in my pockets and then... Oh, uh. well, that was a freebie. <laughs> <laughs> he just, like... Could you imagine, like, a guy who's like, ah, I've just lost both my legs in an explosion. And then some guy just comes along and he's all like, New legs. Oh, shit. All right, then. <laughs> All right, yeah, guess guess I, Yoshikage Kira, serial killer and hand fetishist, just got off scot-free. Man, you got a new face? New life? Maybe now I can finally lead a quiet life. Uh, Unless the guy I've taken the identity of has is, a family. Is also a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he'll come back for me. Oh wait, no, he's dead. But the cops. <gasps> on his trail. That the doesn't cop, happen. The but copper wouldn't rooms. it be funny? Oh. And everyone's like, oh, he got away. No, Ayasuji's dead. And Kira changed his face and name and address, becoming a different person to be continued. Dun dun dun. So, Nick. What? Good app. Yeah, it was alright. Game changer. Is it a game changer? I think it's a game changer. I don't know if it is a game changer. It feels like it's exactly the same where we left off, except now I is dead. Well, now, now they know him mm-hmm. by... Name. Identity, if which, not by what, how to find him. Which he's discarded entirely. He knows them. He knows what they can do. It's true. That's true. But he was also spying on all the other stand users anyway. Game changer. <laughs> Nick, highlights and lowlights for this episode. Right. High light. Let me think about a high light. High a lie. It's hard to pick one highlight. Yes. It's a good app. It's a damn good app. My highlight is probably... Oh, it's gotta be uh, Jotaro's watch-based smack talk. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I reckon my highlight would just have to be post-Kira cutting off his hand and running away. Where it's just like, what do you mean? I'm Jotaro. I'm fixing it. Josuke. Sorry. I'm Josuke. I'm fixing it. And then <laughs> going, that doesn't make any... Oh. Huh. Fixed ties. Severed hands. <laughs> Steamed hands. <laughs> You know, Kira, you're an odd man, but you make one good hand. Low lights. <laughs> I'm, co- I'm, I'm percolating a steamed hams, severed hands joke. <laughs> <laughs> My low light. Well, Kira, I made it despite your directions. I thought you said we were having steamed hands. <laughs> no, no, I said steamed <laughs> I hands. I said severed hands. Hmm. Well, I'm from Mario and I've never heard the expression steamed What hands. if I were to purchase someone else's hams and... <laughs> Hands and disguise them as my own. This is bad. Please, someone meme we're, this. We're trying to thread this needle, but it's just not working. It's, it's literally steamed hams or steamed hands. Yeah. Low lights. Just the ending, to be honest. Like You didn't like the ending. I don't like the fact. I think that's an amazing moment. I mean, it's great, but at the same the time. The colours and everything. Well, it's more that like we le- we leave in a position. The Austin Powers billboard. <laughs> We we leave in a position that, to me, feels like we've gone back a step. Also, wrong of me to accuse you of not liking the ending. The low light isn't necessarily a not like thing. Sometimes you're choosing the worst of a good bunch. Oh, but at the same time. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I, I shouldn't have put the words in your mouth, at least. <laughs> uh, no, it's sort of like we, we end up in a position that feels like, oh... So now we're back to where we were before. I See, I don't take it that mm. way at all. I think it's a, a new status quo, a new terrifying stage of the investigation. Are. Yeah. It's still good. It's just that it's like, oh, so now we don't know who he is again. Okie dokie. We'll, we'll just keep on going then, you know? But also now he's on his guard for them. Mm. And yeah, but he already was. He wasn't really, though, because like he found out that powers existed when Shigechi happened. Mm. And then he was like, oh, I can kill anyone. I'm super cool. I'm Yoshikaka Kira. Yeah, I guess now if he has, like, like a development He, he literally of... only realised that he had left any evidence they could have tracked him down with when they all met at the tailor today. Yeah, that's true. But even so, it just feels very much like, oh, I'm just gonna keep hiding again and live a quiet life. Well, he life. is a terrible coward. Yeah, and it just feels like, oh, he'll just keep not doing anything <laughs> apart from... <laughs> that's the Kira way. Yeah, so he'll just live a life as a happy samurai and be like, well, they'll never find me but again. He... He might lay low now for a while and not murder until the heat light, heat dies down. Well, exactly, yeah. And that's bad for the good guys. They'll never know who he is again. They'll never avenge Rami Sukamoto's death. Yeah. So it's just a bit like, all right, so we're, we're in the same spot as before. Okie dokie. All right, well, that's not how I see it, but you're entitled to your opinion. I'm just giving like a yo-ho-ho. A yo-ho-ho. Ho. Uh, arm movement where you bring your arms together and away like a pirate. That's how it feels. It's like, okay, then we're just going to keep on going. Sure. Your low light? 
My low light. Those Nazi punks. No, they're cool. Uh, I like the way they mess with Kira. You do realise that someone's going to sound bite. Did you all low light Nazi punks? No, they're cool. No, they're not. Not until you said that. Don't disappoint me, listeners. <laughs> Make something good. My low light is when Kira is like, oh, hello, co-workers. Look at my severed hand. <laughs> Why, did you not like the idea of someone walking into the street and being like, oh, here's my severed hand, instead of hiding it under his thing? Yeah, I feel like it's not really the most curary thing to do, to be like, I'm going to freak out these normies. Yeah. Although he probably had a plan set up immediately. It was like, yo, I have this severed hand. And then people are like, whatever happened to Kira? It's like, maybe he went mad. Mm. He did have a severed hand last time I saw him. Maybe he's like the mad dog of Dojima. <laughs> That's all that was going with. Okay. Yeah. Does he have a severed hand? Of course, hand? you mean the mad dog of Shimano. Well, how many prefectures can there be? Not prefectures. How many little families districts? Families of the uh, Tojo clan. How many families of the Tojo clan can there possibly be? I don't know. There's a, there's a bunch. Okay. There's the Dojima family, the Shimano family. Oh, man. Uh, other ones. Majima Construction. Yes, in later games, yes. Yeah. You know they made um, an anthem for that. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Did I not send it to you? No. Oh. There's... I've probably seen it at some point in the past, though. It's like... Majima construction or something like that. As Yakuza. All, yeah. As they just describe things that are going on in the game in terms of construction. It's like every brick that we pound in the wall. And then it's got, um, what's his name? The main guy. Kiryu. He's punching a dude. It's pound. Ah. It's subtle. <laughs> anyway. So Nick. Yep. Yoshikage Kira has escaped to kill another day. Has I'm- he though? I mean, yes, clearly. Did I see that happen, though? New face, new identity, Mm -hmm. new life. I'm willing to believe that. On the other hand, Dr. Ayasuji, dead. Uh Uh-huh. Some other guy, dead. (laughs) Some other guy. No body. Oh, shit, there's no body anymore. They know where Kira's previous house was. Mm. What do you think is going to happen next time on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable, in the episode entitled Atom Heart Father? (laughs) You know... There are some episodes where I'm like, okay, sheer heart attack, it's a stand. Right? It's got no weaknesses. Yeah. Atom Heart Father could mean so many things. Uh, however, I think... <laughs> however, the thing that it does mean The thing is... that it definitely 100% will be the thing that it means, it has something to do with the baby. Sure. We still haven't met the dad, or the mother, or like... Well, I mean, there has to be a mother, obviously. Maybe not a dad. Unless it was growing in a tube... Shit, man. Or sprang fully formed from someone's head. Maybe it itself is the personification of a stand itself. <sighs> Spooky. Yeah. No, it's not that, though. It's, um... Okay, Adam Hart Father. Adam Hart feels like a reference. Adam Hart Father might mean Adam Hart is the stand and the father is the father of the baby. And, like, maybe Jodo and Joseph are just walking along in the street going, You know, Kira's out there. He's doing something. He's lurking like a samurai. In the woods. Famously known for doing that. Yeah. Uh, and then some guy's all like, oh my god, that's my baby. It's like, how do you know it's your baby? It's Because like, I can't see it. Yeah, it's covered in makeup and it's crying all the time. That's why I got rid of it. <laughs> and that's why I'll get rid of you. Or maybe the baby's all like, dada. And it's all like, oh, wait, who are you pointing at? And then there's the father. And it's all like, <gasps> it's Rohan. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That'd be a plot twist. Yeah, I reckon something to do with this invisible baby... And they're going to find the father and he's a stand user. He's all like, I don't want the baby. I don't want the baby. I don't want the baby. And then he like attacks them with his stand or something to that effect. Okay. Yeah. And what do you think is going to happen with Kira and and co going forward? Hmm. Okay. I reckon something that has to happen because it can't not happen uh, is you've got, what's the chef guy's name again? Tonio. Tonio. Uh, He is going to get a new customer in (laughs) and it's going to be... The new Kira. Whoa. And he won't even realise that he's serving Kira. <gasps> but Kira will know who he is. And he'll be like, and as long as he doesn't know who I am, we will have no qualms and I can live a quiet life. And then he'll walk out. <laughs> and then Josuke will come and be like, hey, did you see this motherfucker who looks like this? And he's like, yeah, he's a customer. Like, Why would Josuke know that though? Oh, I'm sure this is later down the oh, line sure. when they figure things okay. out. This doesn't happen, but so, it, that's a fun little fan fiction. Yeah, so there has to be some kind of investigation that's going to be happening because uh, I remember you described this whole part, like part four, as a little bit Twin Peaksy, and Twin Peaks, well known for its detective work. So there's going to be some detective work, which we've already alluded to in Jotaro being like, "Hang Do-do? on, observe, look carefully, Get listen, evidence baggy, <laughs> doubt." Uh, yeah. So they're probably going to do some detective work on the house, maybe, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more around like, "Hey, did you know Yoshikage Kira? Did he pass through here, or oh, something yeah. like that?" 
I don't know. Yoshikage Kira? Why, Yoshikage Kira died ten years ago tonight! What? Wake up from Joseph's dream. Yeah. Uh, yeah. J- Joseph's dying dream. <laughs> oh, where's my child? And now I die. Quickly, give him the deal. Um, any thoughts on Kira's new identity? Any complications that may arise from that? Or is it just going to be like, oh, he was a single bachelor just like me. How convenient. Hmm. I don't know how much work Kira has put into his appearance, like from a bone structure point of view, <laughs> but it feels like if Kira is... A new face, then he'll probably want to look completely average, right? He wouldn't pick an outstanding guy, because mm. then all the ladies would be it like- It was in quite a rush, though. He was. He So he's accidentally picked a model <laughs> and gone, all right, get in here quickly. He picked a famous idol, and now he has to go on TV all the time. <laughs> Maybe he looks like- And he'll accidentally refer to himself as Yoshikage Kira, serial killer and hand fetishist mm. live on air. <laughs> And they'll be like... Josuke uh, will be eating cereal at home and, like, the, the raised up spoon will fall out of his hand into the bottle. And he'll spit out, like, milk that's yeah. still in there. Um, we'll get a shot of Okiyasu who's drinking, like, coffee. Mm. And it'll just... All over Koichi. Yeah. <laughs> just add Koichi's house. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I feel as though his new body... the new stand- body. The st- at last. The stand will be the same, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the stand's the same. But the new body, I think the only complication is just going to be with him being like, ugh, I don't like this body. It makes me feel unruly. Well, it's still like fundamentally his body. He's just got the features of yeah. the other guy. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but what else is a body, Liam? What else is Like a the body? facial features and fingerprints and hair. It's yeah. still like his torso and... Oh, true, true. But that's like every time I look in the mirror, I see, I this, see this unfamiliar face. It causes me such distress. What happened to my locks of long Beautiful David Bowie-like hair? <laughs> Does he have the same hair? I mean, David Bowie had a lot of looks. Oh, wait, no. Um, Aya says that uh, she swapped out his hair. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Because I was just... For a brief moment, I was like, wait, but if he has the same hair, he'll look the same from the back. It's just that one guy that stands out super big because of his Beautiful gaudy suit hair. and blonde hair. Yeah. I suppose now he has to have a new suit. Why? Um, well, one, oh. his tailor's dead. Yep. Um, two, the tailor shop is exploded. Yep. Three, he's got a new body, which no, means... He doesn't have a new body, Sorry, though. he has a new face, mm-hmm. which means he got to dress differently based on, you know, the contours of the face. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fashion is serious business, Liam. One change and it suddenly... <sighs> everything's new. All right. Yeah. Comprehensive. Yep. So I reckon the biggest change will be that... That he's a big famous guy. <laughs> he'll need a new suit. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Yep. So that about brings us to the end of our episode. Mm-hmm. Big distribution news for the old JoJo's world recently. Um, just in the last few days, we've migrated our Twitter feed to a new host. That's our Twitter feed. Uh, sorry, our podcast feed. There we go. To a new host, Podbean. Um, we'll probably change the JoJo's World.net address to redirect to that after a little while. But for now, if you want to check out our Podbean page, you can check it out at uh, podbean.jojosworld.com. It's pretty good. It's... Um... It's no Koichi good. It's more like a like an Okiyasu Josuke. Okay, well, I good. worked pretty hard on it, so I don't appreciate you putting me hey man, down. I'm just saying Koichi is like up here. He's like top tier fetching, <laughs> you know? We've also got ourselves onto Spotify and Google Play. Um, I've been informed by a listener that the Google Play thing is working correctly. Though being as we're in Australia, I can't actually see it because I don't have podcasts here on and that yet. We, we are plebs that can't get it, so... Uh, yeah, so mm. Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher. Feel free to uh, give whatever feedback you're able to on those platforms to us. That really helps us uh, attract new listeners, etc., etc. It makes us feel good too, which is always nice. If you want to follow us on Twitter, tell me that Chase is good, which is obviously incorrect, then... Uh... We've got links there, I At think. JoJo's Podcast. Shall we plug our own things? You can. Oh, well, I'm at Milk Juice, because that's me on everything. Also, if you do have any issues, of it, evidently, if you're listening to this episode, you've found this one. But if anything anything has glitched up uh, as a result of the migration, just let me know, and I'll do my best to fix it. And of course, if you would like to financially support us... Patreon.com slash... JoJo's World. It's a good time. Good times there's, for all. There's bonus content. We talk about things and then we get money for it. It's, um, yeah, it's basically that. <laughs> there's bonus content that involves us talking more about things that... Aren't JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. We are definitely not qualified to talk about in any stretch of the imagination. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm, I've got a lot of opinions about the Star Wars prequels. Oh, fuck me. Yep. And until next time, heroes... To, to be, be continued. continued.
Where's the next time Heroes from? I think that's a one-shot RPG thing. Are we stealing from one-shot RPG? No, because it's also just like a general, like... Uh, a general sign-off. From like, you know, pulp cartoons and stuff. Ah, uh, right. Till next time, Wally Watchers. I was just thinking, if you're in a lecture and they have to end the lecture, it's like, until next time, Heroes, I would feel so much better <laughs> about myself. Adios, amigos, and to be continued. You could do like Yong Yeah, where he's like, and until next time, Yong out. And then he like fades. Until like next that. time, go team venture. Until next time, don't be a hand fetishist serial killer wearing a purple suit and an arsehole. And another man's face. <laughs>